Tapache is becoming extremely popular these days. And best of all, it's one of the easiest beginner fermentations you can make at home. But if you're new to brewing, there can be some unknown aspects to fermenting at home. Today, I'll answer all of your burning Tapache questions and also show you a new Tapache recipe to brew up for your next batch. I'm Trent Musho, and this is The Brew Show. Let's talk Tapache. One of my first videos that I posted almost two years ago was all about pineapple tapache, a fermented pineapple soda that is fizzy, slightly sour and funky, and a perfect hot weather drink to make at home. It's one of the best beginner fermentations because you really don't need a ton of special equipment, and as long as you have a fresh pineapple, you can probably make one right now. But just because it's simple doesn't mean there won't be questions. And one of the biggest and most frequent questions I got was why does my tapache look different? To answer that, we'll need to take a closer look at the actual fermentation. You see, when we homebrew beer, wine, cider, and the like, we're using a yeast that we buy from a store that is sealed and then carefully controlled all the way through fermentation in order to get a repeatable and delicious product. But for something like tapache or other naturally fermented drinks, we're at the whim of mother nature. Where am I? And whatever bacteria and yeast that might be hanging out, on this case, on the skins of a pineapple. Typically, we're looking for lactobacillus, the good bacteria that's responsible for all kinds of yummy, funky ferments like pickles, ginger beer, yogurt, and sourdough bread. But more often than not, there can be some other bacteria along for the ride, which can greatly vary your results. I've even seen variations on the tapachis I make, and it's not guaranteed that each one will be exactly the same. But luckily, there are some things you can do to improve your chances of making a great tapache. Let's walk through a new recipe I have that uses some dragon fruit to add another layer of fruity complexity and give this tapache a beautiful color. And along the way, I'll also answer some of your most frequently asked questions. Let's go. I'm starting off by pulling together all the equipment and ingredients. We'll need a big fermenter. I got a gallon glass jar here. Of course, we have our fresh ripened pineapple. Then the piloncillo. This one I got came in smaller cones, but if you can't find piloncillo, brown sugar works fine. Next, some spices. I'm keeping it simple with just cinnamon. And lastly, our new ingredient, a dragon fruit. And right off the bat, we have our first questions. Can I use other fruits? And what about spices? And the answer is yes, you can. Actually, you can really replace the pineapple with any skin fruit that you can think of. Apples, pears, plums, get crazy with it. Or you can do like I'm doing today and complement the pineapple flavor with another fruit. Dragon fruit, when you find one that's ripe and fresh, can be bursting with flavor. And when you find the right one, it can add a lot of color too. My grocery store mislabeled the dragon fruit, so I ended up with the white kind. Which won't add a lot of color, but will add a good amount of flavor. But you can also find dragon fruit in the frozen section these days. This is where you can really be sure to get the right color. I had both, so I threw both in. But to save money, just be sure to get the pink one if you want that color pop. And for spices, using anything in that warming spice area works well with these flavors. So things like cinnamon, clove, anise, ginger, etc. would be fantastic. Heck, maybe even adding a touch of cayenne might just give this a nice spicy kick, but go easy. I also got some other fruit-based questions, one of which being, do I need to wash the fruit? Yes, please wash the fruit. Don't worry about washing away the bacteria and yeast, that's okay. It'll remove a lot of the harmful ones that can negatively impact your fermentation and there'll still be plenty of good lactobacillus in the skins of the pineapple for fermentation. But when's the best time to use the pineapple? The best time to make this recipe is right at peak ripeness. If you go too early, well, for one, you'll be wasting a lot of pineapple, since this is a recipe that uses pineapple scraps. And if you wait too long, then the flavors will be off, and other bad bacteria might be creeping in, like the dreaded mold. So really, wait till it's perfectly ripe. You can test it a few ways. One is by smell. You should get a nice, strong pineapple smell coming off of it. Another is by look. Generally, the color of the skin starts out more green, then becomes yellow. That's a good sign that it's ready. And one last trick is trying to pull off one of the leaves on the top. A ripened pineapple will allow you to pull one of those leaves off with some mild resistance, but still fairly easy. If it doesn't come off, it's not ready. And if they're practically falling off, it's way too late. Whenever it's ready, just process the pineapple as you would to eat it. But instead of discarding the skins and core, use it for tapache immediately. To make the tapache, toss in the cinnamon, the piloncillo or brown sugar, 
One big peel and seal weighs about eight ounces. So I just weighed out these small ones to that amount. But if you're using brown sugar, I found that one cup is a good starting point. Use more if you want it a little more sweet. Although the pineapple is plenty sweet already. The sugar just helps with fermentation. And then lastly, add in the pineapple skins, followed by the dragon fruit. Just the edible part is fine. Here I'm just adding in that frozen red dragon fruit, about a half cup. Let's take a second to answer the question, what type of fermenter should I use? After experimenting a lot, I found that glass is the best. It isn't as porous as plastic, which can harbor bacteria and make future brews not as good. And the extra benefit of glass is you can pour boiling hot water into it to heat sterilize it. This ensures you're starting on a clean slate with no extra bacteria growing inside your fermenter. Plus, it's pretty cool to see the fermentation going on. Stainless steel fermenters work too, but other metal fermenters will not work since the acidic nature of this drink will eat through some metals and can leach out some nasty chemicals. As for the lid, using a napkin with a rubber band will work fine, and I've done that many times before. But in all my trials of making tapache, every time I use some sort of airlock, I get the best results. They keep any air from coming in, but they don't make a full seal of the container, which can lead to explosions if you seal an active fermentation down. The airlock helps the CO2 created during fermentation escape. They come in many different shapes and forms. Some fit into a rubber gasket, some can be used on mason jars. Whatever you choose, it's up to you, but I'm just laying out some wisdom I gained if you want to use it. I will say having an airlock is a great thing to have just in case you ever get into more home brewing and fermentations down the road. So with all those main ingredients and all that equipment, we just need to top it up with filtered water. Yes, filtered water is best since tap water can have some chemicals in it that react negatively with our fermentation, giving the final product a rubbery, almost band-aid-like flavor. Yuck! So just pick up a gallon jug or use a Brita filter to clean out some of those nasties. Then just top up the fermenter, give it a stir or shake, and add your top. Ferment this on your counter for three to five days, depending on how warm your home is. The warmer it is, the faster it might go. And the more it ferments, the more sour and funkier it will be. So check on it every day or so to see how it's going. You should start seeing some bubbles forming on the top after a few days. This is a good sign. But if for some reason you're noticing some weird texture or consistency, don't worry, because you're not alone. Why is my tapache thick is probably the number one question I got. And the answer to your problem is that everything is going to be okay. Actually, it's a bit common but usually points to an issue with those other bacteria besides lactobacillus taking a hold of your fermentation. One known culprit is Pediococcus. What did he say? <laughs> Keep it together, kids. It's a bacteria that's commonly found all over the place, but probably most notably seen in sour beers. But it can go through a thick, ropey phase during fermentation. But thankfully, it does go away after it ferments. So your best bet is to just let it wait a little longer. It could also be that you had a super sugary pineapple and the sheer sugar content is making your drink thicker. In which you can also try thinning out the tapache with some more water to loosen the texture. And next time, maybe just use a little more water. But if none of that works, your best bet is to just try again. I know it can be frustrating, but remember, you're probably only out a few bucks at most. So don't sweat it and just give it another go. Nailing a good tapache recipe is worth it. Trust me. So once your flavor is at your ideal sweet to sour ratio, it's time to bottle. It's a good idea to bottle while there's still some fermentation going on. This will make sure you get some fizz later on as it continues to ferment in the bottle. Speaking of bottle, the next question is, what other kind of bottles can I use? In the last Tapache video, I showed these flip top bottles and these kombucha bottles, which work great. Even beer bottles and crown caps can work. But my new favorite bottle is the plastic one, a PET bottle to be exact. Ideally you'll get one that's used for carbonated drinks, so they can hold the pressure better than regular water bottles. Make sure they're well cleaned out, and then fill them up, straining out the fruit and spices as you go. The best part about these bottles is that as they sit for another two days on the counter, they'll build pressure and you can actually feel the bottle expanding and becoming harder with that pressure. A great indicator that your tapache has some fizz on it and is ready to be chilled. It also means you don't have to burp the bottle if you're scared of overpressurizing. These things can hold a lot of pressure, making them a lot safer than glass. So once they're filled up, cap them and store them on the counter for about a week. Then just toss them in the fridge until you're ready to drink. How long can they be stored? A great question that's hard to answer. It depends on how long you've already been fermenting it for. 
if you stopped your ferment a little earlier to make it more sweet, you might get away with two weeks in the fridge. But if you go longer during the main fermentation, you might only get a week in the fridge before it starts to turn vinegary. And if you keep it in the warm conditions of your home, it certainly will last shorter. But if it does go too long and turns into vinegar, it's not necessarily a bad thing. People drink vinegar for its health benefits, even though it's rough to drink. Or you can always try cooking with it. It's not a complete waste. But speaking of health benefits, what are the health benefits of tapache? Well, probably the biggest one is thanks to lactobacillus, which gives this drink probiotics. Probiotics are great for gut health and digestion, much like kombucha, yogurt, and other naturally fermented foods. But I find that tapache also gives me a little pep in my step albeit not a healthy one, but the sugars in this do give me a nice pick-me-up midday. And in the last video, I said that this has 2-3% ABV. That's not entirely likely, but I guess it's possible. You're probably more looking like 1%, and adding more sugar won't necessarily increase the ABV to make this a hard tapache. It'll just make it more sweet. Some of you did ask, how do I make hard tapache? I would recommend pitching some brewer's yeast with that extra sugar to bump up the alcohol content. Or you can just add some tequila or beer into it and have yourself an instant, refreshing, boozy tapache. So did I answer all your questions? If you have more, leave them down in the comments. And if you do brew up this dragon fruit tapache, be sure to let me know. But tapache is just scratching the surface of fermenting and brewing at home. And if you liked making tapache, then you're going to love making your own hard cider. Some might even say it's easier than tapache. Click this video to find out.